In other news now, gun-free South Africa has taken aim at police for failing to curb gun-related crime. The South African Police Service presented uh, their fourth quarter crime stats earlier this week for the period January to March 2023. Gun-related murders have increased from 23 people shot and killed a day between 2021 and 22 to 31 people being killed in the past financial year. Gun Free South Africa says most gun crimes are committed with illegal firearms. It's now calling for several interventions to address the issue. The NGOs, Jeremy Very, speaks to us now. Mr. Very, good afternoon. Welcome to today and thank you very much sure. for your time. As they say, the numbers don't lie. The situation is very serious. It has actually gotten worse when we come to gun-related violence and gun-related murders. Your organization now is calling for urgent interventions. What do you want to see change? I think the first thing is, um, as far as the government as a whole is concerned, you know, we are quite disturbed that based on information that we have, is that the fire on bowl that has been the subject of several consultations with civil society from the Secretariat side will apparently not even under the current administration before the elections it be entertained in parliament and um, i think if one takes that as a cue then one is concerned by the lack of political will to inject the necessary urgency in terms of finalizing that particular bill one is also particularly concerned that from the police side, despite the crime stats showing obviously what we expected, that given their admission by the National Commissioner in front of the Portfolio Committee before, that the Central Firearm Registry System, to put it mildly, is in a mess. Um, one is concerned also that with the current briefing that when the National Commissioner was given an opportunity to say something on the matter, that after that last Portfolio Committee admission by himself, that no indication was given of clear measures to improve the internal controls and, and environment. And I think that is the first challenge. The other problem is from the police side also, we still have no dedicated effort to go and find the outstanding firearms involved in that Prinsloo grew up in the Operation MP case in which I was involved as actually is still circulating in the Western Cape and probably killing and maiming people here. And as is evident in that investigation, we found that even in the KwaZulu Natal environment, that the firearms went there before they went to the Cape. They went to into taxi uh, violence syndicates in, in, in the in, in the Gauteng region in the run up to the Mall of Africa opening and the violence there that still there is no dedicated effort uh, to actually go and find those guns. Instead, what we see is still this, these generic operations, which are important, but in the absence of clear intelligence that directs us to find those guns for which we are liable in the SAPs for having put on the street that is killing people, mm. I think, and having no units, or in our case, we suggested a specialized unit it must be formed to do that we are concerned that absolutely nothing is done are you saying that and if, no uh, amount if, of yeah mr v, let me come in there in the interest of time are you saying that in the absence of a central firearms registry and uh, lack of controls it's going to it's being difficult for the police um, to control the legal guns and stop them from falling into the wrong hands Yes, firstly, from the guns in its own ranks is the biggest concern. And that is the first thing. And there, the, 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 the tightening of, of the type of controls that were exploited by criminal syndicates led by Colonel Naidu and Prince Lu, who operated in the CF Armada, is still exposing this, the police to risk of those leakages. So that's the first thing. I think it's important to just emphasize there. But... 
I think when one is coming to developing dedicated capacity, you know, is historically when we had the firearms units in the mid 90s, we had dedicated capability that went to go look for firearms with gangs and went to go search for them instead of leave, leaving it up to random operations in which we by luck possibly get a gun in a roadblock or whatever random search. Um, but we specifically went to look for for firearms that were involved in multiple crimes where gangs are involved or taxi violence or even in some cases uh, civic political related violence at the time. Now this is something that worked, you see. So if we're talking about, I'm not saying the central, the central firearm registry is in a mess that had to be, had to be fixed. I wanted to have expected that the National Commissioner in the response to the statistics where firearm related crime has gone up, that at least internally, there would have been an improvement in such a much to our knowledge. There's been no improvement. There's no plan to correct it. And there's no concrete measures to improve the crisis that the National Commission himself identified to the Portfolio Committee. And to complicate matters, you mentioned at the start that you don't see any political will, which is very necessary from a leadership perspective to, to, to stem this rise in gun-related violence in our country. Yes, it is. Look, the only people who can pass that bill after we've all been consulted in civil society for the past two years, is Parliament. You know, and if this is not even going to be on the agenda prior to the elections, then, well, it doesn't bode well for, and without any indication of when, on the schedule for consideration, it will be on parliamentary agenda, then it really does not give us any hope and secondly, it is not a reflection of political will on the part of all parties who are sitting in parliament, be they opposition, be they the governing party, if no one is even raising the stark problem that the bill will not be heard for this. Perhaps it's an election issue that people don't want to raise, but it is a serious concern in terms of political will on all parties, all governing parties. If this bill hangs and hangs, despite the promises and the continued mm. deaths as a result of firearm-related violence, that seems to be just as increasing exponentially as it did in the last comparative stats. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Jeremy Very. He's, of course, with the, the Firearms Lobby Group, by the NGO Gun Free South Africa. Just some of the reaction, but zooming in on the issue of the increase in the number of people who've been shot and killed, uh, going up from 23 in the previous reporting period, financial years 21, 22, up to 31 in the past financial year. Not a good picture at all. And concerning that in Parliament there's no move on this new bill that can help us to really deal with the uh, proliferation of illegal guns in our country.